It was centered in an area of San Bernardino County that's in the San Andreas Fault region, and seismologists are studying it closely. Our team coverage continues now with eyewitness news reporter Robert Olguin live at Caltech. Robert? Michelle, seismologists here say that tonight's earthquake had no connection to the earthquake that struck Chino Hills earlier this year. Interestingly, they say that tonight's quake is actually related to an earthquake, a 7.1 earthquake that struck the same general area nine years ago. The people who would have been very close to this earthquake would have felt strong shaking and, and, and a jerky motion. As you move away, the high frequencies die off and you would have been left with the rolling motion. So we're getting reports from Palm Springs or Big Bear of more rolling motion. That indicates that they're pretty far away. And by the time you get over into Los Angeles, very few people would have been feeling this earthquake. Dr. Lucy Jones with the U.S. Geological Survey says that Southern California averages about three magnitude five earthquakes a year. And while we've been in a relatively calm period, tonight's 5.1 quake serves as a strong reminder that we live in earthquake country. We need to remember, however, that we have a distribution of earthquakes, and they're not always going to be small. Jones says that tonight's quake is technically an aftershock from the Hector Mine earthquake that happened near 29 Palms back in 1999. What we call the Eastern California Shear Zone is this group of faults. You see how they're parallel to each other out east in the eastern part of California. And just because tonight's Tembler was technically an aftershock doesn't mean we shouldn't expect more shaking. Just because it is an aftershock does not mean it can't trigger its own aftershocks or even another bigger earthquake. And Jones says that there is a 5 to 10 percent chance that tonight's earthquake will trigger a larger aftershock. Those percentages remain in place for the next three days. And there have been nine aftershocks so far, but the largest has registered only at a magnitude 2.4. Reporting live from Pasadena, Robert Olguin, ABC7 Eyewitness News.